Hi, my name is Jeff Heaton. I'm going to talk to you about my path through a PhD program and how it contributed to my overall career. I am a vice president and data scientist at a Fortune 300 insurance company. If you'd like to read more about that, you can find that on my LinkedIn profile. You can also read about the various open source projects that I've worked on and other things in this YouTube site. The point is, I'm very technical and I wanted something to further my understanding of the computer science research project process. In particular, how do you actually publish these algorithms to academic journals, get them accepted, and contribute to the overall research process? This is something that I was very passionate about and very interested in. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how I entered a PhD program, how I decided to find one that was compatible with the stage in life and career that I was in. Getting a PhD in your 40s is not a small undertaking. I looked at a lot of options and programs. I had a few specific criteria. I wanted one from an actual university that had a physical presence with actual students. I did not want that university to be a for-profit institution. And I wanted something where I could focus on computer science, get a degree in computer science, and do an actual dissertation that I might use as a springboard to publish things later. Nova Southeastern University is located in Florida. They started with distance learning back in the 80s, way before it was cool. To complete a computer science degree, you need to first enroll in classes. There are eight of these that you need to complete. I did this at a pace of about two a semester. During the course part of your, your degree, you need to go to their campus twice a semester. There you will have all-day seminars, basically, on both of the classes. The, if you're taking two classes, one will be in the afternoon and one will be in the morning. It's located in Fort Lauderdale. There's certainly worse places to visit. My wife would often come along with me when we went there, and we'd stay a few days extra and enjoy Florida. After you complete your coursework, then you begin a couple of semesters where you write your dissertation proposal. During this time, I went to a couple of academic conferences and also competed in a Kaggle, really just looking for a hard problem to apply my dissertation to. This is the phase where some students have the most difficulty in and drop out of the program. If you're really not looking to publish academically, you might want to think about why you're doing a PhD. Also, if you're looking to do one in computer science and you're not particularly apt to programming, you might also want to rethink what you're doing. This sounds obvious, but this was um, something that I encountered from a couple of students that were not successful in the program. After you've done your research proposal, you need to form your dissertation committee. This is several professors that are there at the university. I found that the professors at NOVA were very easy to work with. They, however, it, it's a rigorous program and you've got to propose an idea that actually contributes to research. This is another stumbling block that some students would run into. I suggest you take this with humility and go to academic conferences and try to learn really that web of research and what you're trying to propose and where it really fits into there. It has to be something that is new for the field and just because it's something that might have been a successful project in your career, it might not be actual groundbreaking research. Once everything is done, it's time to defend your dissertation. This can be done just in front of your committee, which usually has three or four professors on it, or it can be done in front of your committee and a group of, of students, like I did here. I do suggest, if you are preparing for a defense, to actually watch some of the other defenses that are done by um, other students in the program. This can give you great insights into the format and the dissertation and generally what the university that you're working with is actually expecting. If you're doing a PhD in a distance program like I did, then you're not actually at the university on a day-to-day -day basis interacting with the PhD community. 
This is probably the biggest drawback of doing a degree in this way. For me, I work in a research and development group, and I don't feel that that was particularly bad for me. I was still able to talk to people about my research and what I wanted to do, and I continued in my, in my process. I was not being folded into a large lab where I could be handed a piece of something much, much bigger to work on. This can be a blessing and a curse because this allows you to focus on what you specifically are interested in researching on, but you're not given as much direction as you might be in another university that has very established research paths and a number of doctoral students and postdocs all working together closely in a program. So if you read online about distance programs, one question that inevitably comes up is, I go through all this work, I earn the degree, it, does it actually count for anything? Well, if you look at US News and World Report, that is, that's really sort of the gold standard for ranking universities. And if you look at Nova Southeastern University, what you always want to scroll down to is the, the rankings. So it showed ranking 191. Now I notice that a lot of purely online universities will have an NA here. They're simply not ranked. So they're, in, they're lower than, than a tier to even, to even receive a ranking. If I compare this to a state university in my city that is very respected, I really, I really like UMSL. Uh, and know many people from there, you'll see that the ranking is really pretty similar. Nova is actually a little bit perhaps above um, UMSL. Now, don't get me wrong, getting a degree from um, Nova Southeastern University or UMSL is definitely not on par with one of the top computer science schools in the country. But it really, the, the distance program that they had and the way that I was able to complete this without going into a traditional PhD program where I would need to be on campus teaching classes um, and performing the traditional PhD route was very valuable to me. Now, has the degree counted for, for anything for me? It, I have really never had it come up. I completed a PhD. I have published a number of um, academic papers. You can find them in the Journal of Machine Learning Research and um, some of the Springer publications. I speak at conferences and I moved up a couple of levels in my company after getting the degree. A degree is just one part of your overall brand, your overall package as a person that you're using to advance in your career. If the degree is going to be the only engine on your plane, it better be from a top, top, top school. But that alone usually won't help you. It's the complete package. It's what have you done? Have you contributed to open source um, technologies? Have you spoken? What does your social media presence look like? What um, experience do you have in previous jobs? What have you done that is going to be valuable to your future employers and where you want to use that? So will a PhD actually help you in your own career, life, or pursuit of happiness? Only you can really answer that. But if you have any questions for me about my process and experience, just post it in the comments, or you can also check out a blog post that I did on my website. I have a link to that. And I hope you'll consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I always post things about artificial intelligence and my own research paths. Thank you for watching.